Arut Jodi, Arut Jodi, Tani Perm Karunei, Arut Perm Jodi, Arut Perm Jodi, Arut Perm Jodi, Tani Perm Karunei, Arut Perm Jodi. Arut perun jodi, arut perun jodi, tani perun karunei, arut perun jodi. Arut perun jodi, tani perun karunei, thank you all uh, for uh, um, joining this session. Um, as uh, Gopi mentioned, and as you all know, um, Valalar uh, raised this uh, flag of San Margam, uh, which has uh, gold at the top, yellow gold um, at the top, and white uh, at the bottom, uh, just two colors, uh, on... Um, 21st of October, 1873, in the morning, at Metukupam, uh, which is where he was residing. Um, uh, it's interesting that, um, you know, the whole um, um, episode uh, or phase of a stay in Metukupam um, is a very significant one, because that's where he raised the flag and uh, also gave uh, this last talk, and uh, on my blog I have made several posts on his last talk. Uh, the, the blog is called The Immortalizing Way of Omnilight, and Omnilight is how I translate uh, Arupur and Jodi. Um, and um, I made a series of posts, and I think I have one or two more left to complete this series on uh, Balalar's last talk. And the last talk was given, Peru Padesam, was given when he raised uh, the flag. Uh, we have notes, uh, and I have pointed out uh, in the articles uh, on Wallalar's last talk uh, in my blog, that for the most part, uh, the notes seem to be reliable. Um, and uh, in some places, of course, the notes attribute certain things to Wallalar that we cannot make much sense of, they are obscure, or maybe if they contradict something that he has said or are plainly absurd, uh, then of course we have to ignore them uh, because, uh, you know, whoever was taking the notes uh, may have uh, committed errors. Uh, but for the most part, I think that the Peru Badesam notes are reliable and agree with many things that Walalar has said in the Agarwal and also in other poems and the Vinapams. And in fact, lines are even quoted uh, in those notes referring to poems and so forth, uh, late poems. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, once again, uh, for the most part, um, the notes uh, are reliable. And according to the notes, uh, when Wallalar raised this flag, and again, we should note that uh, Wallalar was not uh, given to uh, these kinds of uh, publicity, uh, um, you know, acts. Uh, he was a very modest man, very retiring person. And I have pointed out that uh, he did not even set himself up as the president of the Sudha Sanmargam um, Society. It's Arup Jodi who is the president. Uh, and his uh, uh, late years, uh, or the late phase, I think about uh, the second half of 1873, um, he uh, lived more or less in retirement uh, in Metukupam. So for him to have raised this flag with the gold color, yellow hue, uh, on the top and white at the bottom, means that something had occurred 
of great significance and he felt compelled by the will of Arupur and Jodi and we should recall how in the first Vinnapam he says that uh, the Satyanyana Sabai you know he did not start it because he had personal uh, ambitions uh, uh, to do this or that uh, he makes it very clear in the first Vinnapam that it was Arupurunjodi's uh, uh, um, int- will. Uh, he was confirming to Arupurunjodi's will, and we know that uh, from all the verses in Agaval that Arupurunjodi is the ultimate reality. It has both a personal aspect and an impersonal aspect, and this integral unified conception is uh, wonderfully uh, uh, explained, clarified in all the verses in the Agaval. Um, this is Porul, this is uh, Perumborul, this is uh, uh, Sat, this is uh, Sit, Sat means uh, uh, pure reality. Uh, sit the pure consciousness and inbam uh, pure bliss. But at the same time, it is also Thai, it is also Tandai, it is also Tunai, uh, Vrav, and so forth. Guru. So, uh, this, uh, you know, great conception uh, vision that Walalar has articulated, expressed in the Agaval, shows us both the great impersonal transcendent aspects of Arupa and Jodi as well as the personal aspect. So when we take that personal aspect into consideration, then it makes perfect sense that Walalar is saying in the first Vinapam that Arupa and Jodi indicated that uh, in that Pari, Purvanyana Siddhambaratin Vadabal Parvadi Paramindru Kurika Padigindra Uttaranyana Siddhi Paratul Yam Alavugadanda Nidangalam Siddhi Allam Valanga Thiruvarul Nadan Saivom in Rum அது தருணம் மிகவும் அடுத்து சமீபத்த தருணம் என்றும் அது பதிலிடத்தை யாம் அருள் நடம் புரிதற்கு அடையாளமாக ஓர் ஞான சபை காணுதல் வேண்டும் என்றும் திருவரு குறிப்பால் அறிவித்தது அறிவித்ததுமன்றி அருளுருவாகி எங்கள் அகத்தும் புறத்தும் அமர்ந்தருளி யாதோர் தடைகளும் இன்றி அத்திரு ஞான சபையும் தோன்றி வழங்க செய்வத்தருளிய தேவரீர் பெருங்கருணையை கருதுந்தோறும் பெருங்களிப்பளிகின்றோம் இனி அத்திருஞான சபையை அலங்கரித்தல் வேண்டும் என குறிப்பிட்ட வண்ணம் அலங்கரிக்க தொடங்கின்றோம் ஸோ இட்ஸ் ஆல் பேஸ்ட் ஆன் அருப்பருஞ்சோதிஸ் குறிப்பு டு வல்லலார் அண்ட் ஐ பிலீவ் இட்ஸ் த சேம் குறிப்பு தட் லெட் வல்லலார் டு ரேஸ் திஸ் சன்மார்க்கம் ஃபிளாக் ஸோ வி ஹாவ் டு லுக் அட் த சன்மார்க்கம் ஃபிளாக் இன் த சேம் வே வி லுக் அட் தி construction and completion of the great um, Satyayana Sabai, which I must add, I uh, cannot but help point out that the original structure has been modified. And I believe I have on my blog a picture of the original structure, which I found, um, I think, in one of Tulasi Sri Tulasi Ram's uh, uh, posts, uh, Tulasi Ram, as you know, uh, compared uh, Valalar's teaching with uh, Sri Aurobindo's teachings. Um, I have, well, you know, it's my view that Valalar's teachings stand on their own. Uh, they don't need any kind of confirmation uh, through any other teachings. But, uh, you know, he made a fruitful, um, I think, uh, comparison and also did a lot of translations. Um, and, um, you know, um, so it's worth looking at uh, Sri Tulasi Ram's work. Uh, and perhaps down the road I can, um, you know, um, give a short talk, give a talk on uh, Sri Tulsi Ram's contributions um, in light of his uh, comparative work of uh, Valarar's teachings with uh, Aurobindo's teachings and the mother's teachings. Uh, but in any case, I found that in one of his posts uh, and... Uh, the structure has been modified, I think, to um, a significant extent. And um, I believe that, you know, I've often on had thoughts of uh, initiating um, uh, an attempt to construct 
a Satyanyana Sabai in the United States. Uh, the thought has come and gone, but if it does materialize, uh, or at least uh, just as an idea or proposal, I think it should conform to the original structure. We don't want it to be uh, like a Hindu temple. Of course, it is the temple of the Omni Light, it is the temple of Arthur Jodi. Um, and on this note here, not to digress, but, uh, you know, I've even thought of how it could really be made um, very interesting as to attract, maybe here even in Las Vegas where there are open spaces and plains, uh, you know, similar to uh, Waterloo, where you can have, you can use this high tech and all that and uh, display technology and you can create these screens, you know, almost like a holograph. Uh, and then the screens can go up, and then you can have the Omni light or Purinjodi as a pure um, golden uh, white, a golden light. So interesting possibilities are there if people start um, thinking about this. That's the initial step. Uh, and if there is uh, Arupurinjodi's uh, could it be of some sort? I think it will materialize. But I think something like Temple of Omni Light or Temple of Universal Light, uh, um, something like that, I think uh, it should be actualized at some point in uh, the United States. Um, but uh, who knows, you know. At least we can entertain the idea. So in any case, uh, you know, we have to look at the raising of the flag in just the same way we look at the existence of the Satyanana Sabai. It has come into existence as the result of Arupanjodi's Kuriput Valalar. And uh, I uh, believe that uh, Valalar followed the same Kuriput uh, uh, since I think uh, when he raised the flag, he had uh, complete enlightenment, complete uh, realization of Arupanjodi. Um, and the flag symbolizes that. So um, it is an extraordinary event, and it is of great significance to those of us who are interested in this great path of Sutta Marga, which I must again underline is not a religion, as Wallah has pointed out and made clear. It's not a religion. You can find in it... Um, uh, elements, uh, the, the highest or the best elements of many religions. Um, but And the gist or essence, uh, the highest essence of many religions. But it is not itself a religion. Uh, it is a margam. And it is a path of virtue. Uh, it is a jnana margam, path of wisdom, uh, path to enlightenment. And that's how I think we should look at it. And so the temple um, um, is uh, a hall, a Satya Jnana Sabai, uh, where we get uh, together and we contemplate and we inquire together, uh, or we can even, you know, do it individually. Um, so we have to keep that in mind. Um, and again, um, it is as a result of Arupanjodi Skuripu, and in addition to the uh, Satyanana Sabai, we have Metukupa, uh, the Siddhivalagam, Siddhivalagam. Uh, Siddhivalagam, as the name indicates, is the abode of uh, Siddhi. Um, and we know from Agal verses, the, one of the very distinctive features of uh, Sanmargam, Sutta Sanmargam, is that our goal, uh, the ideal we want to keep in mind, is Siddhi. And, of course, uh, Wallalar has a conception of Siddhi that's, uh, 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 you know, clarified in the Agaval and the Vinapams and uh, other late poems. Um, and here, again, there are some interesting uh, contrasts to be made uh, with the great uh, Tamil Siddha tradition. Um, I've made some notes uh, in the blog, but uh, it probably needs to be pursued uh, in a separate talk down the road. Um, so how is Wallalar's conception of Siddhi different from uh, goals pursued by uh, some of the great uh, Tamil Siddhargal? In any case, uh, Siddhi is our goal, and Mutti is uh, a means to it. 
Now, someone might say, well, you know, it's sufficient achievement unto a lifetime if it is achieved at all, mukti. Mukti, liberation, essentially liberation from uh, desires. Okay? So in, in, in Buddhism, that's regarded as the highest state. Uh, moksha is regarded as the highest state in the traditional uh, Hindu view. Uh, but in Sanmargam, it is uh, a means. So that tells us something about uh, the depth of the path that we call Siddha Sanmargam. Uh, moksha itself is a means to what is Siddhi, and what is Siddhi? Uh, Walalar has described it in terms of the Perinba Peruvar, Maranamala Perinba Peruvar, that is Siddhi. It's not, uh, as in Buddhism, some nirvana or state of extinction of the individual, and that's also there in uh, the Vedantic conceptions. Uh, moksha, you just become dissolved, your ego dissolves, uh, and uh, as Sri Ramakrishna used to say, like the salt, a ball of salt uh, dissolves uh, in water, you know, or in the ocean. Uh, and Sanmargam, that is not the ideal. In Sanmargam, um, and you find this also in some great mystics like Swami Ramdas of Anandashram, uh, Kerala, that either you, you, it's a transformed individuality. This Anavam um, that has kept us in ignorance is removed, uh, and there is a purified individual uh, illuminated by the realization of uh, Arupa and Jodi. Uh, and that is the, there's an individual there that is living the Maranamala Puruvar. I mean, it's the same individual, there's a continuity between you or I and the individual um, uh, in the Maranamala Puruvar. But it's not the same kind of uh, continuity uh, that we have between, say, you know, you in your uh, 20th year and you as you exist right now. That's, you know, that is simply the anavam um, and the mummalam, the anavam or egoism, um, uh, the um, uh, attachment to matter, to physical things, that is uh, maya, and kanmam, karma, it's continuing, you know, from one year to the other, from one life to another. Uh, that is broken. So, but the individual is there, freed from this mummalam, and basking, as it were, in the jodi, arupan jodi, and living this uh, marnamala paruvarvi. Uh, we can only have some conceptions of it based on uh, Walala's uh, indications. Each person has to keep this ideal and strive towards it and, uh, you know, improve their understanding as a result of, you know, practice of Sanmargam. But in, in, in any case, uh, that is the goal, Siddhi. Uh, and this place in Metukuppam is Siddhi Balagam. It's the place where I think Wallalar uh, attained a complete integral realization of this goal. Uh, and uh, that's why he called it Siddhi Walagam, and that's why he also raised the flag. I think the flag uh, signals uh, completion of his journey towards Arupur and Jodi. Um, and the fullness of understanding, you know, it's a, it's a kind of enli it's, it's enlightenment. And it's an enlightenment uh, that goes uh, way beyond, uh, for instance, uh, Buddha's enlightenment and so forth. And, you know, some people may find this controversial, but I think it can be, um, uh, you know, shown to be reasonable. And uh, that's something that uh, I'll be doing uh, in, my, in my blog. Um, and the central point here, again, we come back to Walalar's uh, great conception of Siddhi. Uh, and the more we strive to understand what Walalar meant by Siddhi, relying on the Jivakarnya Vurkam, uh, the Vinnapangal, and the Agaval verses, and any other uh, vers uh, verses from the uh, Aram Thirumurai, uh, the closer we are to understanding his achievement.
and the main goal of uh, Sutta Sanmargam. So to signal this uh, uh, achievement of Siddhi, he raised the flag. So the flag uh, has uh, a flag indicates um, flag signals his uh, 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 complete realization of Siddhi, but I think it also has other uh, aspects. Um, as the notes indicate, he says that in the Sanmarga column, which he contrasts with the previous age, and his point basically is that um, the central spirit spiritual truths uh, pertaining to Arupa and Jodi and uh, the universe and so forth, the human body, the uh, Anma, uh, they have been obscured. So obscuration means covered up, uh, you know, uh, it's like smoke covering something and you can't see it clearly. And uh, his point is that they've been obscured by all the declarations, conflicting declarations and claims of these uh, religions and theologies, Samayam and Madam. Uh, and the age of Sanmargam, which is also signaled by the raising of the flag. So we can say the age of Sanmargam began on 21st of October 1873. The age of Sanmargam is an age where this kind of smoke and all that is going to be dispelled, uh, and we're going to have a clear, uh, we're going to uh, achieve more and more clarity. So that's one of the things uh, about Sanmarga column. The other thing he says is, from the notes in Peru Badesam. Well, just look at the uh, enormous uh, growth in scientific knowledge and uh, technology. You know, uh, can, how can we go to the moon? Ketariya the Kelvi, you know, nobody ever asked that question before. Uh, you know, how can we uh, uh, go and explore uh, the depths of the ocean? Uh, how can we fly like the birds, right? Ketariya the Kelvi. And all of these have become uh, actualized. And this is all part of uh, Wallalar's uh, uh, very... Um, uh, the word English word is prescient, meaning seeing into the future, uh, anticipating the future. Uh, when uh, Valalar says that Arupa uh, and Jodi as uh, um, uh, special, uh, specially manifested in the Jnana Sabai, and Alavagadan the Nadangalam Siddhi Alam Balagatiruvaral Nadan Seivom. So the Siddhi. Siddhis are, as you know, in Sanmargam are basically classified into three categories. Karma Siddhi, Jnana Siddhi, and Yoga Siddhi. So the Karma Siddhigal are all these great achievements and accomplishments of action. And they do include the marvels of uh, technology. We shouldn't imagine that the Siddhi is some... Uh, some, something like, uh, uh, you know, like a Sai Baba trick. Uh, and I mean the, uh, the, lat, uh, the later Sai Baba, producing something out of the wrist or whatever it is, some ring and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's not, uh, we shouldn't trivialize Siddhi in that way. Siddhis are great achievements and accomplishments. Um, and so all the marvels of technology I see as uh, Karma Siddhigo part of Karma Siddhi uh, Jnana Siddhi, of course, all the expansion in scientific knowledge. Uh, has been enormous growth in the early 20th century, uh, just uh, two decades or so after uh, Valalar's uh, passing from uh, the um, physical body. Um, enormous growth of scientific knowledge, uh, that is part of Jnana Siddhi. Uh, and the yoga siddhigal, uh, 
new ways have opened up. San Margam itself uh, is a path that has opened up the way to achieving uh, yoga siddhigal, which are states of meditation, uh, high states of meditation, uh, different forms of samadhi, different forms of higher consciousness, and so forth. They're all part of yoga siddhigal. Um, all this uh, is signaled uh, by the flag, Ketariyada Kelvi. Uh, is indicate is an indication of uh, the beginning of Sanmarga column. So we have to see this Sanmarga column in a broad perspective based on Valalar's uh, remarks as reported in the Perubadesam and uh, as suggested or stated in the Vinnapangal. Um, it's not simply the acceptance of Sanmargam as such, it doesn't matter what name uh, we attach to it. What we have to look at is the meaning and the, the values and the central goals of Sanmargam. Um, is everyone uh, able to hear me? Hello? Uh, yes, Doctor, we are able to hear you. We are able to follow you. Thank you. Now, this Sanmarga column, uh, which the flag indicates, the beginning of Sanmarga column, it's uh, 21st of October, 1873. Uh, as I mentioned, I believe at the conclusion of the uh, wonderful events organized by uh, Gopi and Prasanna and others uh, in celebration, um, uh, the celebrations a couple of weeks ago, Valarar's birthday, birth, uh, birth uh, uh, celebrations. The San Marga column uh, includes uh, very uh, important values, the spread of very important values. And as we know from um, the statement of Jeeva work, which, uh, you know, along with uh, uh, Indriya Workam, Karana Workam, and Anma Workam, Valalar had this uh, posted uh, on the walls of the Satya Dharma Sali. So it had Valalar's approval, and uh, I think uh, perhaps even for the, to, the, to a large extent uh, composed by Valalar, or at least seen and approved by Valalar. Jeeva Workam Avade Anmakkal Penmakkal Mudaliya Yavaradatilam. So, right here we see uh, Valalar's uh, what's called feminism, or actually women's rights. Equality of women affirmed uh, by Valalar actually much, uh, you know, it's between the 1867 uh, to 1872 in that period. Uh, way ahead of, uh, you know, many things, many other um, individuals and uh, movements and so forth, which came later. Anmakkal penmakkal mudaliya yavarkal ilhaptilum, jadi samayam madam asiramam sutiram gotiram kulam sastra sambandam desamargam uyandor tandor and umbedam ningi. Yellavaram tamaraglai samatir kuluvadi. So that's what's called egalitarianism. And uh, Valala's egalitarianism is a very radical one because it also includes uh, some equal rights for animals, which is already there in Manumare Kandavasala. You know, there's a big discussion going on between the uh, Manushakravarti and some of his ministers as to what to do with uh, Vidhi Vedanga. Okay, since he ran his chariot and killed that calf, what is the fitting punishment? And uh, Valalar puts his own position uh, in the words that come out of the mouth of the uh, um, King Manu. And this Manu is not uh, the Manu of the horrible caste courts. Manu Smriti, you know, contains horrible caste courts. Uh, that's not uh, the Manu we're talking about. This is a different Manu Chakravarti. Um, and... Uh, one of the main points there is that as far as uh, the right to life is concerned, uh, animals have it equally. With animals share it equally with human beings. Uh, and um, 
you know, is an uh, interesting case to be made for it. And I think in some pieces on my blog, uh, I've explored it. Uh, so the egalitarianism of Sutta Sanmargam uh, includes equal right to life uh, for animals and, of course, equal right to protection from uh, torture and uh, from uh, suffering. It doesn't mean that uh, when I have my, when we have our uh, lunch, we have to give uh, uh, an equal uh, seat to the dog or the cat. Uh, some may want to do it, but uh, that's not required. It uh, doesn't mean that animals have all the rights that humans have, but in respect of life and uh, uh, right to protection from uh, suffering, uh, they share that with uh, human beings. So that's part of the great egalitarianism of Sanmargam. But as the statement of Jiva Urkham indicates, on makkal pen makkal, uh, jadi samayam madam asramam sutiram gotiram kulam sastra sammanam de samargam uyandor tarndor, that's class, uyandor tarndor and umbedam ningi. So once again, for the benefit of those uh, who may not know Tamil, Anmakkal penmakkal means uh, uh, regardless of gender, woman or male or female, jadi caste, uh, samayam religion, madan, madam again uh, doctrinal dogma affiliations, asram. Uh, we know that the Varnashrama system, uh, you know, uh, brahmacharya, grihastha, and uh, sannyas ashrama. Okay, this is the traditional Hindu division. Uh, so when you're a brahmachari or student and celebrate, uh, that's the student phase. And then a grihastashtama is the householder. You're married. Uh, and actually there's four. Uh, brahmacharya, grihastha, and then there's vanaprastha, which is retired. But you retire to the forest, as it were. Uh, these days it could be anything. Um, and finally they have sannyashtama. Now, each of these stations have their own codes. Uh, there are these do's and don'ts that separate people occupying these stations. You know, there are do's and don'ts for brahmacharya stays, there are do's and don'ts for grihastashtama, there's do's and don'ts for vanaprastha, and do's and don'ts for sannyasa. And, you know, certainly if you want to take sannyasrama, there's separation between sannyasrama and householder. Uh, sannyasi shouldn't do this that the householders do, and they shouldn't do that which the uh, householders do, and so on and so forth. So, uh, Walala is absolutely right. This is a way of dividing people. Okay? A pair, it may seem at first sight to be, hey, what's the problem? You know, there's a student stage, and there's a householder stage. And then if you retire, that's another stage. Uh, and then if you want to quit everything and become a sannyasi, that's in a different stage. Or what's the problem? Well, the problem is in the traditional conception, uh, there's a lot of codes of conduct uh, for these different stations, uh, which end up actually creating divisions, okay, and perhaps even discrimination. Grihastashramas, uh, Grihastashrama people can uh, discriminate against the brahmacharyas, uh, uh, people in the brahmacharya state saying, hey, you're in that stage, so you're not allowed to do this. Uh, and it's the same thing. I mean, there's a really fundamental division uh, between the sannyasis and the householders. Although the sannyasis are dependent on the householders for food and everything else, it's the sense of superiority. Uh, sannyas, uh, you know, they think they're in some other superior world and so forth and look down on these poor, ignorant uh, Grista uh, householders. So it has created divisions uh, and uh, prejudices. And uh, in Sanmargam, uh, we want to uh, strive to overcome these kinds of artificial divisions and these kinds of irrational prejudices. Okay. Uh, all of them, regardless of the ashrama, they all undergo the same hunger, uh, the same problems, same issues, more or less. Uh, and so uh, we want to just uh, keep that basic human condition in mind and not simply keep creating these kinds of divisions uh, in society and uh, separating people. Now, that doesn't mean we shouldn't make distinctions. Obviously, there is distinction between male and female. Uh, student and teacher and so forth, 
But these distinctions should not become hard-boiled divisions resulting in discrimination and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's the whole uh, point of uh, the egalitarianism in Sutta Sanmargam. So Asramam, Sutiram, Gotiram, these are all uh, group divisions. You're this Gotram and I'm that Gotram and the Gotrams don't agree and so we can't marry and this and that. You know, you know all those kinds of problems uh, in the past and maybe they still exist uh, in India in uh, certain groups. Kulam Sastra Samandam. Uh, traditions, uh, scriptural affiliations, you know, we follow this Agamas and you follow something else, so you are our enemies and so on and so forth. Desamargam, provincialism and nationalism. Okay, uh, This is a very timely message, uh, not only to for uh, India, but also for the rest of the world. Uh, and India is uh, particularly the problems of these divisions are compounded. Because of the divisions based on all of these things, which uh, Walala's statement of Jiva Varukkam is designed to overcome. And that's part of the significance of raising the flag, is that the age of Jiva Varukkam has started. Okay, the age of the practice of Jiva Varukkam has started. That's part of the significance of raising the flag. And we can look at, you know, I mean, this again requires detailed analysis that uh, I can't go into now. Uh, but at least we have an idea of what are some of the things associated with Sanmarga column. Okay, Ketarya, the Kelvi, uh, uh, greater clarity about uh, the uh, truths uh, uh, concerning the world, uh, Anma, Arupar and Jodi, and so forth but also a movement towards uh, realizing Jiva Varukkam or the practice of Jiva Varukkam. And we can see, historically, you can see that uh, um, there has been um, in the 19th century, uh, sorry, in the 20th century, late 19th, 20th century, uh, a movement in the direction of uh, uh, the practice of Jiva Varukkam and the ideals and goals associated with Jiva Varukkam. So as I was mentioning, desamargam, nationality, and provincialism. Uh, it's a serious problem in India still. You know, you have all these people uh, that have, of course, India is unique in terms of all the different provincial languages and even food uh, and other cultural customs. Uh, uh, the language barrier also is there. But uh, you don't use, uh, you know, uh, uh, prov provincial origin uh, to uh, discriminate against people and uh, acts of hostility and so on and so forth, uh, which uh, you can find uh, happening uh, in India and in maybe other countries uh, also, uh, this kind of provincialism. And with Jiva work, um, we want to overcome that. So uh, in, on Sanmargam, it's completely irrelevant to us whether somebody is from Gujarat or from Bengal or from uh, Himachal Pradesh or Kerala or whatever it is. Uh, we just deal with that person as an Anma uh, in a Degam. Okay, that's the basic attitude we have to take towards people. Uh, not just people, animals also are Jeevargal. You know, they're all Jeevargal. Uh, and they're all subject to the same kinds of sufferings. Uh, they have more or less, they have the same rights and so forth. Uh, that's what we have to keep in mind. And the great uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, uh, the United Nations and the United States actually played an important role uh, in this uh, Universal uh, Declaration of Human Rights. That is, again, uh, part of this... Uh, um, the age of San Marga. Okay, if you look at the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, uh, it uh, uh, acknowledges many of the things uh, that are there in San Marga. The central values of San Marga are embodied in the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, but there's only one lacuna there in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and San Marga actually has gone beyond it, and uh, we can see various movements now trying to realize it, and that has to do with the status of uh, animals. Okay, Universal Declaration of Human Rights basically focuses on human beings and their rights. 
okay? And in fact, Article 2 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and it's almost as if Wallala's uh, spirit was uh, behind this, uh, as it certainly uh, was, uh, everyone is entitled to all the rights and freedoms set forth in this declaration without distinction of any kind, such as race, color, sex, language, religion, political or other opinion, national or social origin, property, birth, or other status. Let me repeat that again. Article 2 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, everyone is entitled to all the rights and freedoms set forth in this declaration, and you can read all the articles for that, uh, without distinction of any kind, such as race, color, sex, language, religion, political or other opinion, national or social origin, property, birth, or other status. Let us read what Wallala had posted in the Satya Dharma Sali in the late 1860s, in 1867, 68, thereabouts. An makkal pen makkal mudali yavargalil dattilum, jadi samiyam madam asiramam sutiram gotiram kulam sastra sammandam desamargam uyandor tarndor, that is birth or other status, that is class status. Vedam ningi ellavaram tamarugalai samatthir kolludu. Almost word to word, uh, anticipating Article 2 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Really remarkable. Um, and, uh, you know, there's many things here. Article 5, no one shall be subjected to torture or to cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment. Uh, that's uh, covered under the prohibition on quali in Sanmargam and the Jiva Karnia Workam. Um, and various other things that are all implied by uh, the central values of San Margam. So if we want any proof that, uh, you know, the, um, the flag signals uh, the beginning of the San Marga column and that this is going to be uh, a move, movements in the direction of uh, 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 realizing the value of equality among human beings, uh, you can just look at the Universal Declaration of Human Rights as well as all the other different movements that have come into existence, social and political movements. Now there is in fact, uh, San Margam has uh, a social and political dimension which I intend to explore uh, in, um, in uh, some articles uh, in my uh, blog. Um, but uh, for instance here, the risk of digressing a little bit here, um, there are um, verses, uh, uh, you know, speaking of San Margam, um, and uh, one of them actually includes Karunaila uh, Achi uh, Kadindurga. That means uh, the... Um, Regimes of cruelty uh, should uh, disintegrate and become extinct. Okay? So that is also part of the San Marga column. And we, have, we can see, in fact, uh, the, the, all these dictatorships have been slowly undermined. Um, and even in a country uh, like Saudi Arabia, uh, which has a very cruel uh, dictatorship, monarchy, and they behead people in public and cut people's hands off and so forth, uh, some changes are starting to occur, you know, especially uh, uh, in regard to the rights of women. Some slow changes are starting to occur. So um, we can see, and, you know, the overthrow of Saddam's uh, dictatorship, other dictatorships around the world, uh, at least people are more aware of the serious issues uh, with the dictatorships uh, and, uh, you know, atrocities and uh, gross human rights violations uh, become immediately known to people. So like what happened to the Rohingya in Burma, the brutal Burmese military uh, raping and killing uh, hundreds, uh, uh, thousands, uh, uh, displacing thousands of Rohingya, you know, and they have to take refuge in Bangladesh, which to its credit accepted them. And uh, India also accepted, but uh, I wasn't happy at the fact that uh, people were, uh, um, you know, saying we shouldn't take uh, them and so on and so forth. Uh, that's contrary to the values of San Margam. Um, 
Bangladesh, to its credit, has tried to absorb. It's one of the poorest countries in the world, but it has absorbed a lot of the Rohingya refugees. Uh, and the United States, uh, to its shame, utter shame, is now rolling back all of the protections it had for refugees and asylum seekers. Uh, but people have become aware of these things uh, and have, uh, you know, uh, are carrying out various kinds of protests. Uh, so the central values here uh, of the Jiva Urukam, um, we can see various examples uh, since the since 1873, uh, when the flag was raised, uh, various movements uh, in favor of this Ellavaram Tamarugalai Samatar Kolluvadu value. So this is also part of the significance uh, of the flag. That we are Sanmargam is the age of Ketarya, the Kelvi, and all that, but also moving more and more towards non discrimination, creating a society that uh, practices in a greater degree and to a greater scope non discrimination. Uh, non discrimination is a very fundamental value in Sanmargam. And uh, as I pointed out, Walarar has taken it, I think, to its ultimate extent. Uh, by including animals and uh, even the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, uh, you know, great as it is, seems to fall short uh, when it comes to animals. In fact, there is now hardly any reference to animals there. Uh, but we see certain movements here, even in the United States uh, and in Europe uh, and in other parts, uh, a movement to uh, uh, for animal welfare. Uh, animal rights, and related with it is the growing movement for uh, vegetarianism, which is also a central value in San Margam. Uh, one cannot really call oneself a practitioner of San Margam if one is not given up meat. Pulal. Uh, this doesn't mean you just only eat leaves and roots and stuff like that. No, a vegetarian uh, diet has so many aspects to it, and this again uh, deserves a separate discussion. So vegetarianism, also we can see a growing movement. And as I mentioned, animal welfare, animal rights, all this is uh, part of the Sanmarga column that the flag signals. Okay? So uh, there is really more to this than just simply raising a flag. Uh, and again, the Peru Badesim, um, um indicates that. Um, there are many aspects to San Marga column. So Valalar then also says, uh, uh, you know, that is, that is, you know, I mean, as I said, uh, we can go into detail and look at all these different movements, but uh, even an introductory understanding uh, will make it clear that uh, this is all moving in the direction of the central values of San Marga. Most important is non-discrimination, uh, and then, of course, there are other things like animal welfare, animal rights, and so forth. Um, there are also things against torture, uh, starvation, you know. Uh, we've got... Uh, World hunger, you know, so many groups and organizations trying to deal with the problem of hunger and solve it. Uh, Varumai, you know, Inmai. That is one of the things mentioned in Jiva Karni work, Inmai. Uh, poverty. Uh, now, you know that the Nobel Prize went to Avijit Banerjee for his work on um, uh, poverty alleviation. Okay, and I actually ordered his book. And I think there are some interesting uh, connections to be made uh, with the central values of San Margam. Uh, Walarad then goes on to say uh, something, or the, according to the notes, he said something to the effect that Akkori Unmayil Yadanil Namada Nadi Mudal Puruamadi Iraga or Nadi Ilkindrude, and the Nadi Nunil Puruamati in Utpuratil or Savutungu Gindrude, and the Nadi Puram Bellai Varnam, Mayer Puram Manjal Varnam. A seven key or Narambi Erum Irangum Mirakindrude, Ikorinam Anubatin Kan Velangum. A Vareala Kuripagwe in Rea Dinam, Balimugatal Ariala Varnama Kodi Katia, Ini Elover Kum Nala Anubam Arivan Kantondrum. I'm not sure if this is the needs to be taken as it is. Uh, I have my doubts about this. Now, certainly, 
Purva uh, Madhi uh, is a is a main is the main uh, um, uh, location of contemplation. That's the spot to which we direct uh, our attention. It's also there in Karna uh, We try to practice uh, by focusing the mind uh, uh, in this uh, Purva Madhi. Um, but, uh, so we can say maybe there are some things there in the Puruvamati uh, which will correspond to this yellow and white. Uh, but I don't think that this, uh, uh, this is exhaustive of the significance of the colors of the flag. Uh, in fact, that's coming to that and then wrapping it up, um, the gold and white uh, I have a couple of interpretations. Now, it's very interesting, Walala only selected two colors, and gold and white. Uh, and I believe that the gold really, um, uh, from uh, w one interpretation will be that the gold is a symbol of Pursavai, and the white is a symbol of Sirsavai. And we know Pursavai and Sirsavai, you know, constant, uh, uh, they, they keep on occurring in the poems and so forth, the uh, late poems. And uh, they have great significance uh, in understanding the nature of Arupuranjodi. Arupuranjodi is manifested in Sirsabai and Arupuranjodi is manifested in Pursabai. But what are these? Sirsabai, uh, of which the Jnanasabai is also a symbol, um, it's, it's the, you can say it's the soul space, hall of the soul, uh, hall of consciousness, that is the Anma. You know, uh, it's an anma sabai. When uh, you realize arupa and jodi within yourself, in the purvamati, uh, chit sabai uh, associated with the purvamati, that is uh, that's part of uh, the sit sabai and arupa and jodi's presence in sit sabai. For sabai is of course the golden hall, and uh, this can be taken to be the cosmic. Uh, presence of Arupadinjodi. Arupadinjodi is uh, everywhere in the universe, but also it's a golden hall, is the transcendent level. Ella Veligalukum Appal Appalai, as the Vinnapam says. Ella Satigalukum, Ella Satargalukum, Ella Talevagalukum, Arundukulukum, Eu Mariadai, Ella Tatungalukum, Ella Satigalukum, Appal Appalai, Velangum or Sutanyana Valil. That is the force of Okay, so Tanyana Valil, Tamako Uru with a Talam of Puer with Siridan Kurkapara, the Taniparan than my Talame, Arupur and Jodi Ragi, Walangi Gindra. So that is Porsabai. So Porsabai is the transcendent uh, level, and Sitsabai is the Anma level. Of course, we have to realize Arupur and Jodi first at the level of the Anma. I have to realize Arupur and Jodi within myself before. I can um, realize uh, Arupar and Jodi in its uh, transcendent aspect, uh, in the aspect that Walalar uh, described, which I just quoted. So, uh, gold then is the Porsabai, and uh, white is the Sitsabai, and the flag signals, uh, symbolizes, uh, indicates to us to uh, shows us actually to um, to contemplate Arupa and Jodi uh, in the Porsabai as, as as existing in the Porsabai and also in the Sitsabai. So when we look at the flag and we look at the gold, we have to think of uh, the Porsabai, and when we look at the white, we have to think of the Sitsabai. And uh, the meaning of them, I just uh, somewhat um, sketchy uh, uh, in a sketchy fashion, um, uh, you know, I just mentioned. Now the other thing also, uh, uh, another aspect of the colors I would say is that the white really is sutta, purity. And of course sutta sanmardam. So that's the purity uh, that uh, all the workums, okay, all the workums are designed to purify us of the mummalam. That's the whole objective of the workum. And without the workums, uh, we cannot proceed. And we notice that the workums, uh, a lot of them have their basis in Jivakarunyam. So Jivakarunyam is, uh, is the foundation and it's the key to self-purification, Suddham. 
and that's indicated by white. And since white is below the gold, white is the foundation. So in Sanmargam, the Suddham, uh, process of Suddham, uh, which includes the Varukams on the foundation of Jivagaranya Varukam, is symbolized by white. So when we look at the flag, we look at white, we have to remind ourselves not only of Arupparanjodi and the Sitsabai, but also the Sanmarga Varukangal based on Jivakarni Varukam. And on the basis of that Suddhi process, Suddham, we have Siddhi, that is gold. Okay, that is the Arut Selvam, Arut Pon and so forth. That gold symbolizes Siddhi. And uh, I've already mentioned, um, you know, Walalar's uh, referred to Walalar's uh, conception of Siddhi, Maramulla uh, Perun Bakperu Warwe. So when we look at the gold and the San Marga flag, it has to remind us of Maramulla Perun Bakperu Warwe. And when we look at the white, it has to remind us of the Warkangal, which is the process of purification. Uh, and from another angle, so to speak, when we look at the gold, we think of Arupparanjodi in the Pursabai. And when we look at the white, we think of Arupparanjodi in the Chitsabai, in the uh, eyebrow center, Purvamati. Um, I think this is basically it. I think this is, uh, you know, um, um, the two main uh, levels of meaning of the uh, colors. The gold as a symbol of Pursabai and white as a symbol of Sitsabai the gold as a symbol of Siddhi, and um, and let's remember Siddhi, when we talk of Manamala, Peruvaru, and so forth, the Ponnudambu, and so forth, uh, that Walalar mentions, uh, all that's included in the um, in the gold color, Ponvarivam, um, and uh, all that. Um, and the white uh, uh, signifying the Warkangal, the whole purity, the Suttam part um, uh, that comes before Sanmargam, Sutta Sanmargam, Suttam, but it also includes the work angle uh, on the foundation of Jivakarni work. I think that pretty much, I think, exhausts uh, the significance of the two colors in the great flag of Sanmargam. Now, um, the color white and yellow, uh, we can also see in uh, the... Um, Agaval verse, uh, white and yellow. Ponmai tereyal porul uru veliye anmayin mare kumaru paranjodi. Porul uru, I guess it means that the essence of all things. Porul uru veli anmayil mare kumaru paranjodi. So there's a reference to the gold color. Uh, in the end of the verses uh, on the screens, in fact, the last but one screen is gold in color, the gold screen, and then uh, finally, uh, and then comes the white uh, screen. When may tereyal may pari valiye anmayin marekum arparanjodi. May pari vali. That is the um, um, truth being may pari the uh, valley in which you comprehend the truth about Arupar and Jodi, that valley has been hidden by the white screen. So the gold and yellow, uh, the, uh, the yellow, uh, golden yellow uh, and white uh, are also two uh, final screens. Uh, and therefore, uh, the selection uh, of those two colors in the San Margam flag uh, clearly has a link uh, with the Agava. Okay, um, how shall we interpret this in light of the Agava uh, verses on Tirai? Uh, it can remind us again when we look at the gold color in the flag that this is the color that uh, hides the Porulwuru Valley. And I think the raising of the flag means that screen has also been removed by the grace of Arupar and Jodi, and the white screen. Uh, uh, and perhaps we can also um, um, offer a prayer 
to also enjoy the um, asking for the removal of the screens, all of those screens, but particularly the gold screen and the white screen, which are really the ultimate, uh, ultimate, which pertain to the ultimate levels, Horuluru Valley and uh, Meipadi Valley. Um, if you look at Vinnapam, I want to wrap this here in a few minutes. Um, the Vinnapam, the second Vinnapam mentions, uh, again, it's very remarkable, but it's, it's brief and uh, requires uh, um, commentary analysis and connections and so forth, which I can't uh, go into here. So in the second Vinnapam, he says about one mai, uh, sorry, one nam. When my semi pasumai karumai pon my yenum vanna vagai galum. Okay. And then he talks of the vanna bedangal. When my yet semi, when my yet pasumai, when my yet karumai, when my yet pon my. So when my semi pasumai karumai pon my. Okay. So look at the range of colors. There's five colors that uh, Valalar mentions as the primary colors. And uh, it's an interesting project to see uh, whether all the other colors can be derived uh, by a combination of these colors, the Vanna Bedangal, uh, which uh, Walalar already mentions here, all the Bedangal. He mentions the Bedangal, but he doesn't mention the Vannam that's going to come as a result of the Bedangal. Okay? So uh, that's something we can do as our homework. But when my semi, pasumai, karmai, and ponmai, the five colors, notice that it starts with venmai and ends with ponmai. So basically the whole range of primary colors that uh, Valalar um, uh, envisions or Valalar has uh, visioned starts with white. So it's venmai, white, uh, semi, red, pasumai, green, karmai, black, and ponmai, yellow or gold. The rain starts with white and ends with gold. And what do we have in the flag? We start with white, the bottom, and we end with gold. So he also expresses his conception of the range of primary colors, you know. And uh, I find that also very interesting. So we can see the connections with uh, the uh, very brief remarks on Vannam in the second Vinnapam. We see the connections with the Ponmaitere and Venmaitere, the ultimate uh, whales or screens. Uh, um, and as I said in my uh, uh, interpretation, uh, the white is Suddham, all the Vurukangal, uh, that's the basis for attaining the Siddhi that is symbolized by gold. Uh, and the white, as I said, also symbolizes Sitsabai, and the gold symbolizes the Porsabai. And I think this is how we need to approach the flag uh, and contemplate and meditate on it. Uh, we have Jodi, uh, Jodi Varipade in Sudasan Margam, but we also can have, I think, Vanna Varipade. Vanna Varipade as uh, pertaining, pertaining to the flag. So we can uh, meditate on the Sanmargam flag and the two main co two colors of gold and white and think of the symbolism. You know, that's a good uh, meditation exercise. You know, some people are thinking about, well, what are the practices that I can follow? You know, contemplation, meditation practices in Sudha Sanmargam. Uh, that's something I want to elaborate uh, in certain uh, pieces on my blog. Uh, but this is one, one of the things we can also do. Um, visualize the flag as part of meditation and think of the meaning of the gold color and the white color along the lines that I have pointed out. Uh, now, I mentioned that the flag, I want to end now uh, uh, with uh, some observations, on, again, on uh, the theme of the flag signaling the beginning of the age of San Margam. And uh, I want to just refer briefly to some of the verses uh, in poetry, poetry poems uh, by Wallalar. So let's look at, uh, for instance, um, <coughs> excuse me. So let me find the page here. Um, Kan Purua Putu and so forth, uh, 494. Yes, so when you look at Kanpuruvaputu, uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, 
So you see Sitsadayim, Pursadayim, Sundam, and Adachi. Uh, that is also indicated by the raising of the flag. Sitsadayim, Pursadayim, Sundam, and Adachi. That means a, a complete realization of uh, what uh, the, the Arpur and Jodhi's presence in the Sitsadayim and the Arpur and Jodhi's uh, presence in Pursadayim. Okay, that's what is meant by Sitsadayim, Pursadayim, Sundam, and Adachi. That's signaled again by the raising of the flag. As I said, the gold indicates Forsabai and white indicates Sitsabai. Now, with Sanmarg um, uh, uh, column, um, we have some indications also in the uh, Sanmarg Wolagin Orumainilai. Go to that page here. So these are verses uh, called Sanmarg Wolagin Orumainilai. Uh, and uh, they tell us again what uh, what this age of Sanmargam or Sanmarga column is all about. Uh, first, uh, 5614. Siti Purate Dinandorum Sirkolarul Satibura needed Tartonga, Yetisayan Ullavarum one day, Uruguay Uruga, Mother Tullal Uriga Tolainde. So the key um, words there are Yetisayan Ullavarum one day. Uvagai Uruga, Madat Tullal Uriga Tolaindu. So very clearly again, all this uh, religious divisions and so forth, Madat Tullal Uriga Tolaindu. So we have seen this. Um, it has come about as a result of growth of secularism, uh, atheist movements and uh, scientific rationalism, Pagutariwala and all that, uh, which we know the uh, DMK Dravidian movement uh, with the Periyar and so forth. Uh, but you know, I think the positive function, I think they've exaggerated and um, uh, overstated things, but the positive contribution is to try and overcome all this religious fanaticism and dogmatism and superstitions and all that. That is, they made their contribution to realizing uh, this Valalar Vak, Madat Tullal Variga Tolainde. So in that way, we can, you know, look at these movements, I believe. And you have seen them not just in Tamil Nadu, but, uh, you know, all around the world. Uh, our education system also shows that. Now, it's a more or less secular constitution of India and so forth, uh, or the separation of church and state uh, and all that. I think all that uh, is an attempt uh, at uh, realizing Valalar Suvak, Madat Tullal Variga Um Then he says, Vandre Sivam so again, one uh, this goes back to uh, overcoming all the smoke and everything, uh, clearing up all the smoke and understanding that uh, the ultimate divine reality is one doesn't matter, you know, what names you call, although some names, I think, you know, like Arupar and Jodi have more significance. Uh, so, again, overcoming all the, uh, the, the one that was stated in Jeeva, overcome, overcoming uh, discrimination. Non-discrimination is essential uh, for Armaniya Urumai Pada. Uh, you know, how can anyone have if they're going about uh, discriminating on the basis of gender or caste or a province, nationality, race, and so forth? Um, then again, Sirsabayam Porsabayam Siti Vilakatal Narsagamel Nidui Nanidiga Sarsabayor Potri Varam Petru Vagai Purika Vandiriga Natrasiyam Varga Nayandi. So again, he's, uh, he's praying for the welfare of all beings in all the different directions, but notice again the reference to Sirsabai and Porsabai. Um, that is, realizing the Sirsabai and Porsabai is part of this Sanmarga Kala. Okay, realizing the significance. And again, we should uh, consider Alavaranda Kala. Okay, and uh, 20th century, 100 years, 200 years, and all that is uh, not even a drop in the bucket. Okay, so uh, we're looking at uh, uh, progression, uh, you know, but there are, of course, serious, uh, serious issues. Um, and I think the, uh, the emphasis and the practice on the values of Sanmargam 
are absolutely essential to overcome uh, these challenges. Essentially, we are facing a value crisis, you know. Uh, let's take the climate crisis, okay, the environmental crisis and so forth. All that comes uh, from uh, violating uh, the rights of uh, non-humans. And, you know, actually I mentioned uh, animals in, uh, in San Margam, but San Margam Wallala's uh, perspective is even more radical. Because he mentions uh, Madam Sedi, okay, Wadiya Pair, Kandabodalam, Ullam and so forth. Uh, this plants and trees also are jivalgal in San Margam, and they also have the same right to life and protection from uh, wanton destruction and so forth. Okay, that means we try to minimize uh, the impact on. Um, uh, on these plants and trees. And it's very interesting that uh, the Nyanasabai, uh, as well as Siddhi Walagam and uh, Dharmasali, they're all made of stone, you know. Uh, well, the doors are there, um, but I'm not sure what what uh, what the composition of the doors is, but doors are. But uh, they're all essentially structures made of stone. Um, so we try to minimize the impact on Maram and Chedi. And uh, in the Jeevakarnia work, Malala is very clear that, uh, you know, we have certain animals, like a farmer has cows and so forth, or you have a dog or a cat, feeding that is uh, part of, uh, you know, uh, dutifully feeding them as part of Jeevakarnia work, but also taking care of any plants or trees you may have in, in your backyard and so forth. So, uh, it really, the age of San Margam, is also an age in which uh, we uh, pay attention to the welfare of uh, plants and trees, and not only animals, of course, you know, needless to say humans are included, but it goes way beyond, and this is again, uh, we are still far short of, uh, you know, uh, Wallalar's uh, vision uh, of San Marga Um And uh, so again, you know, one can only repeat to oneself uh, how uh, great and progressive uh, uh, the path of San Margam is when you consider all its central values. Um, so in the San Marga Ulagi in Urumai Nilai, you also have 5618. Karuna Illa Achi Karigi Uruga Arul Nayanda Nan Margal Alga. Perul Nayanda Nalor Ninaita Nalam Peruga Nandru Ninaita Lorum Warga is signed there. So Karunaila Archi Kadigu Warga Arul Nayanda Nan Marga Alga. So these all these cool regimes. Uh, we're seeing increasing awareness uh, and increasing uh, world uh, pressure uh, that's brought to bear on them. But unfortunately, the country where we live uh, today, United States, uh, has a, uh, you know, as a sort of as a cruel regime in terms of uh, uh, detaining uh, migrants and throwing them in uh, detention camps and uh, throwing children in uh, prison cages and all that. But there's a growing awareness of that, and in, uh, in the Congress there's been inquiry, uh, and uh, you know several politicians are concerned, uh, and there's been a pushback. Uh, so, while the challenges are there, uh, the resistance also uh, has been growing. And all this I see uh, as uh, indicative of the age of San Margam that uh, Wadalar uh, indicated by uh, raising uh, the flag. Uh, there are also other verses uh, dealing with San Marga Sangam. Um, Sadiyam Madamam Samayam Tavirte, you know, all this is again um, uh, part of the Jiva Workam. You know, we really have to pay very close attention to Jiva Workam. You know, all the Workams are important, but the Jiva Workam really tells us what the central uh, individual as well as social values of Sanmargam are. Okay. And he says Sanmargam, Nanmargam. Uh, then the in margam irapurikum san margam dane. That means you know we know that uh, Valala uh, gave a lot of advice on longevity extension. Uh, he constantly emphasized the need for uh, proper care of the body in many of his letters. 
Um, so longevity extension also we can see in the science of medicine, uh, there's a lot of focus on extension of longevity. And studying that is part of the practice of Sanmargam. Uh, the conception of uh, immortality is also, um, as now, uh, you know, is being entertained seriously. Um, uh, but, of course, the conception of immortality in Sanmargam is uh, much deeper and broader uh, than any conception of the immortality of the body, which is, again, which is Siddhargal also were talking about it, but uh, it was not a successful uh, project. Uh, and I think Walalar's uh, alternative conception, which is the Tridega Siddhi, uh, the Sutta Degam, Pranava Degam, and Jnana Degam, uh, is certainly something to uh, contemplate and consider and inquire. Um, you know, at least keep that ideal in mind. Uh, that is also uh, part of the Sanmarga column. How do we overcome diseases? And we know medicines has made great strides in overcoming many diseases, polio and uh, smallpox and all that, uh, tuberculosis. A lot of strides have been made uh, in discovering the cure for these things. Um, and as I said, even the conception of uh, indefinite extension of bodily life is entertained seriously um, by some um, medical uh, scientists. So all this is, uh, you know, indicated uh, in the raising of the flag. Uh, to just recap and end this uh, short talk, the flag itself, the color symbolism. Um, first point is the range of primary colors going from white to yellow or gold that's there in the flag because the bottom is white and the top is gold. So it's the range of primary colors Walalar mentions in the second Minapam. The Sirsabai and Pursabai, which is absolutely key to Walalar's vision of uh, Arupar and Jodi. Uh, gold in the Sanmargam flag is Pursabai, white to Sitsabai. And then uh, the, the, the practice of the Vulkams, Suddham, Purification symbolized by white and the Siddhi, Aramala um, Perunba Peruar, that is symbolized by gold. Uh, and as I mentioned, also uh, connections to the two Therais, uh, the Ponmai Therai and Valai Therai. So these are the things I think, uh, and the, all the things that are indicated uh, by the notion of Sanmarga column. And Walalar very clearly in the notes uh, on his last talk says the column A, Sanmarga column, and either Kasachiaga, uh, the Kodi has been raised. Okay? Uh, and there is evidence. Uh, there is, in fact, substantial evidence that all of the values associated uh, with Sanmargam, all of the things uh, Walalar said he wanted to see realized, poems like Sanmarga, Walaga, and so forth, all of them we are seeing progressive realization. Now, of course, it is not some kind of cakewalk because we are really up against the mummalam, okay? Uh, the anavam, um, attachment to uh, uh, matter uh, and karma, as well as the, uh, the asegal, uh, which, uh, which actually are based on anavam which is uh, penase or anase, manase, uh, punase, and also perase or purase, you know, desire for fame and all of these things, they have very deep roots. And uh, so uh, it's a kind of struggle, you know, it's a struggle. Uh, but if we stick to the workangal, I think we have a guarantee of success. Stick to the workangal and, of course, the great uh, mantra of Arupar and Jodi, uh, we can gradually overcome uh, the great challenge and difficulties, obstacles posed by the Mummalam and the Asegal, uh, which have their roots in uh, Anavam. Uh, okay? Um, so from Anavam also you get uh, Veguli and Krodham and so forth. And uh, that's at the root of all these uh, wars. Um, you know, someone can ask, uh, well, what about the two world wars? But notice that that's, again, that is all kanvam, anavam, uh, 
uh, and uh, Manasse and so forth. Uh, Hitler, you know, Manasse uh, and Anavum and all that. Uh, um, the Nazi gang and so forth, um, which uh, brought about World War II. Yeah, these are, uh, you know, there are formidable obstacles. Um, um, this is something that we have to, again, acknowledge uh, and to discuss uh, in San Margam. Uh, the nature of these obstacles, uh, they can manifest at the level of the individual, but they can also have social manifestations, uh, racism and all this kind of stuff. Um, and uh, the only way we can overcome them is to stick to the values of uh, San Margam, you know, stick to the workum. Uh, in our personal lives, and then as a community, um, you know, act on them in the world. Um, the flag, I think, also with the Sanmarga column, I, I'm think, uh, I think it's a good idea to form Sanmarga communities, okay? Uh, and this doesn't, it's, it's not ashram. Wallala did not start an ashram, and I want to make these my concluding remarks here. Somewhat... Um, uh, it's related, of course, to San Marga column and so forth. Um, we need to, to start San Margam communities. Uh, not, it's not an ashram. Balala never started an ashram. The Satyayana Sabe was there for people to come and uh, uh, contemplate on Arupur and Jodi, uh, hold some inquiry, you know, continue inquiry individually or collectively uh, in the Jnana Sabe. The Dharma Sala is the act, acts of charity, you know, uh, and primarily food, but it doesn't have to be confined to food. Somebody doesn't have, a woman comes with a torn sari or something, and you give a sari. Uh, that's also part of Jiva Karunyam, you know, and uh, Dharma Sala, uh, you know, includes those kinds of acts of charity. Um, this, I think, can be taken as a model for San Margam communities. Now, people can, of course, they have their employment and all that, uh, but uh, uh, they need to um, form communities. So, um, you know, and we need to organize the communities around um, models of the Satyanyana Sabha and the Satya Dharma Sala. You know, we need to replicate them uh, in different parts of India and the world. Uh, but the those who uh, are serious about practicing Suttasan Margam need to uh, uh, form a community. And so this could mean uh, marriage alliances and so forth, okay, because the shared values form a really a secure basis for marital relationships. Most of the issues that arise in marriages and so forth ultimately have to do with, uh, we say, personality differences and other things, or what are called irreconcilable differences, but essentially they come to value differences. Uh, and if we have people that all are committed to San Margam values, then we should have uh, programs uh, for marital um, arrangements. Uh, and again, you know, people may have different jobs and so forth, but they can carry on with community activities. They can get together in something like a Satyana Sabai Hall uh, during the weekends uh, and have other kinds of uh, communal relationships. It's not an ashram uh, set somewhere in, uh, somewhere else, isolated from the uh, regular society. But within the regular society, we need to create these pockets of San Margam, centers of San Margam, you know. Uh, and that's one of the ways in which I think uh, we can uh, improve our own lives, quality of our own lives, as well as uh, make our own contributions to strengthening the San Marga column. So with these words, again, I thank you so much for your patience. Uh, some of the stuff that I've said is sketchy. We elaborated later in pieces in my maybe future talks. Uh, but I thank you very much for your patience, and uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr.